Hey guys, so it is a little bit past 10 right now. My alarm has been going off since 9, um, and I've just been snoozing it. One of the meds that I take at night to help with my pain, actually, like, I don't really have any side effects from it, but the main one, I get really tired in the morning, so it can take me a little while to get up. I was hoping to shower last night, but it's just been so hot that I did not feel good enough to shower with pots, so it kind of sucks. I feel like this morning when I do shower, I'm going to have to keep it really short so I don't get a lot of brain fog and feel really unwell from it. Sit up and wait a few minutes and then get up. Typically when I get up in the morning, I get pretty dizzy. So what I do is I sort of sit up, sit there for a few minutes. I can't just stand up and run out of bed. Like probably most people don't do that actually. They probably don't run out of bed because they're tired. But I need to sit up for a bit because if you don't know what POTS is, and in case you don't know the premise of this video, it's in the title, um, I'm talking about POTS today, which is a type of dysautonomia or autonomic dysfunction. It's a condition I've been dealing with since I was maybe 18 or 19, though I've had progressing symptoms since I was 13 or 14. So it has been a while that I've been dealing with some level of autonomic dysfunction. And POTS is characterized by a really large increase in heart rate whenever you stand. And so it can affect things like, you know, sitting to standing, you get really dizzy, your vision blacks out. Just like how it happens to, I feel like everybody, at some point, every once in a while, you stand up too quickly, you lose your vision, your hearing gets all weird, and you kind of feel faintish and dizzy. It's like that, except every time you stand, and it also happens in so many other circumstances. So I feel sick when I'm showering, when I'm exercising, sometimes when I'm not really doing anything, <laughs> you just don't feel good. So in this video, I just wanted to show you what that's like. It can be hard sometimes for me to pick apart my life and think, oh, I do this because I have POTS, but I'm trying my best to do that. So hopefully this video can give you an idea of some of the changes that I've made in my life or some of the things that I do daily um, to help manage my POTS. So with that, let's get into it. I can literally just stare into space right now. like. It's really weird. Pots can make me really fatigued in like a strange way. Like I literally just want to keep staring. Like I don't even want to talk, but I'm going to do it because I will feel better like probably in less than an hour. Um, I'm eating breakfast and I'm going to take my meds now. So I thought I'd discuss with you like what I take um, and what helps me. Um, the main thing I take and I take this like multiple times a day um, is called propranolol. Propranolol is a beta blocker, and what it does is it lowers your heart rate. Um, unfortunately for me, it also can lower your blood pressure, but luckily, um, my blood pressure is not as low as it used to be. It used to be really low, like literally all the time. Um, so I would take Midodrine. This is my Propranolol, and this is my Midodrine. I still take Midodrine sometimes, but I don't take it like every day. Um, I kind of just take it as needed because my blood pressure is a lot more stable, which is fantastic. Then I take my other meds, but those don't really have anything to do with POTS specifically, so. Finally, my meds have definitely kicked in. I'm feeling a lot better. I got to eat. Um, I'm now gonna try to shower, but I really don't want it to make me all like foggy and stuff. I can, it really affects my brain fog and then I feel sick. So let's try to keep the shower under five minutes and just wash my hair. It's hard because I have really long hair, um, but I'm gonna try my hardest. And if I can keep it pretty cold without like shivering, um, I'm gonna try to do that. Um, I just get such a bla bad blood pooling in the shower and um, I can explain later why that's bad. <laughs> um, but yeah, there is something I use to help, which is compression socks. And I will talk about this because Comrade Compression is sponsoring this video. Um, but I just like literally love compression so much. So I'm excited to share that with you. Let's go shower. Not you, just me. <sighs> okay, I was able to keep it under a few minutes, which is really good, which is really also, it's also really hard to do. Um, I'm like shaking a little bit, hence why the camera, <laughs> stop, uh, hence why the camera is moving a little bit, just because it's like, I get a little bit shaky when I'm in the shower. Um, so two quick tips. I use a shower stool. I got this on Amazon and that really helps me in the shower. 
And then the other thing is that I use conditioner that doesn't take too long to rinse out. I know that some conditioners take a long time and then it's really annoying and then I'm sitting there like just trying to get it out of my hair and I'm like, oh my God, get out of my hair. I am feeling kind of breathless. I just um, relaxed in my bed for like maybe 45 minutes, as you can see by my partially dried hair already. <laughs> Um, I know showers just take a lot out of me even when they're short. It's like the heat still gets to me So anyway, I'm about to put on some compression socks So when people are in the shower, you're standing up your blood vessels are dilating a little bit because of the heat um, And as a result, you know with gravity your blood is going to kind of go down to your feet and Hopefully your circulatory system is good enough to help pump it back up so it continues circulating but my body's not very good at that. So when I'm in the shower, a lot of that blood that comes down to my feet stays there. It's very painful and it makes my pots a lot worse since I have less circulating blood. So one thing that I can do to try to combat that is compression socks. And the ones that I use are from Comrade. So Comrade makes the cutest compression socks ever and I'm gonna put them on for you in a minute. Their compression level is 15 to 25. So this is sort of the in-between point of not medical grade compression and medical grade compression compression. They're not too tight to the point where they're really hard to put on or they're uncomfortable since I know it can be uncomfortable to have um, your legs be squeezed constantly, but they are tight enough to the point where I notice a difference and to where they really help me for some of the lighter activities that flare my pots a little bit. But anyway, Comrade is one of my favorite companies because they make extremely cute designs. And I just feel like sometimes when I go out and I'm wearing compression socks, I really want to hide them just because they're like not cute or I feel like they draw too much attention, but like not in a good way. Um, so <laughs> I feel like a lot of people probably know what I'm saying. So with the Comrade socks, I think that they're really cute and they work with a lot of my outfits. So I feel a lot more comfortable going out and letting them be shown. So I'm going to leave an affiliate link down below. So that way, if you wanted to get anything from Comrade and you also wanted to support my channel, you could get it through the affiliate link and I'll make a very small commission. I've been editing for like maybe an hour and a half. It is 1.20 right now. So um, I've sort of just been chilling around. Is that even a saying? I don't know. I think I'm gonna do a bit more work, but I'm gonna do it sitting up because it's really nice to lie down, especially on the pots. But I have to be honest, my back is not always a fan. And that's because I have like two different conditions that come together, but one causes like joint pain and the other one causes dysautonomia, dizziness, and wants me to lie down. So it's like, sometimes they work against each other. <laughs> so I think I'm gonna go sit down in a chair and continue doing work for like another hour and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna make myself some lunch. Um, that's where I'm at right now. I am exhausted. I have been cleaning up for the past maybe 20 minutes, listening to Taylor Swift. Um, I put on some like sports clothes to try to encourage myself to exercise because I like to do that. It's really good for me to do the bike with pots. Um, I think it helps build muscle tone in your legs, um, which is supposed to hopefully help with circulation and pulling up the blood. Um, I don't know for sure if it's helped me, but I'm hoping to be able to do that later. With it being so hot, I just keep drinking water um, and I keep replenishing my salt stick and my propranolol because I always like to get on top of it. So I don't always take the propranolol because I feel really unwell, but rather take it before I feel really unwell. Um, so that's what I've been trying to do as this heat has been killing me. Oh, I mean, you came to my house. That wasn't me. It was you. I came out here for a few minutes, but it's so hot. I'm with my cat, Charlie. <laughs> His absolute favorite thing to do is sit on the terrace. It's like seriously his, there's nothing better. I have to finish some packing since as I mentioned, we're leaving for Fire Island tomorrow. So I really should get to that. And sitting out here in the heat is probably not helping me. I'm like emptying the dishwasher right now. Um, and I'm almost done, but like I'm really starting to feel a lot of pain in my neck. 
And normally I would just say that's like my normal muscle pain, but I'm also getting a bit dizzy and definitely nauseous. So that makes me think that maybe it has something to do with my POTS because sometimes the pain in my neck also like gets worse when my POTS is bothering me. So I feel like it's kind of like a related in some, some way. I've heard that it can be related and I do think in my case it is. Um, so luckily I'm almost done. This type of pain actually has a name and it's called coat hanger pain. It's something that I've had for a while, but it's funny because as a kid, I mean, I've, I've always had so much pain in my shoulders and my neck. Don't get me wrong. It's not all from POTS. However, coat hanger pain is associated with POTS and it always happens to me as the day progresses. I remember as a teen, this would happen to me all the time and I didn't realize why at the end of the day, it was so much worse than in the beginning of the day. So it was kind of like my regular shoulder and neck pain combining with, I believe it's the lack of blood flow, if I'm correct, that leads to really, really bad pain, as well as this like overall sensation of just needing to lie down, if that makes sense. Like your body is somehow communicating to you and telling you, you need to get down soon. It's not like I'm gonna faint. It's like you, you just wanna get down. I don't know how to explain it. That was probably bad. I just got all of my products from Southless by Hiram. Do you guys watch Hiram on YouTube? I'm honestly so excited. I've been waiting for these. Um, I stayed up until midnight to order them because I was so excited. This was like last week. I'm not 100% sure of what I bought because I just kind of got one of every product. Um, I got like the... the kit where like you can order all of them. So let's see, I have a daily cleanser, a moisturizer, and then a bunch of other things that go on top of my face. So I'm very excited about that. I forgot to mention this, but I actually use this really light block. It's so light so I can really easily move it. And I sit on it literally every single day when I brush my teeth, when I'm scrubbing my face wash, when I'm um, putting on makeup because as like I've stated, standing sucks with pots and it just aggravates it. Plus like I don't really wanna use up like my leg time. You know, I can't like, the word I said was leg time to clarify because that's probably a weird saying. But in, by saying that, I'm just referencing like the amount of time that I can comfortably stand or at least like push through the pain and discomfort to stand because I can walk really far, but like I cannot stand for long at all. But anyway, if I can figure out where I got this, I'll let you know. Um, but I just highly recommend something like this. Oh, I have just been lying down like kind of on and off for the past few hours, which is why you haven't really seen me be be doing stuff, which is why you've not seen me do stuff. Um, and I think my neck is getting a little bit better, but it's still hurting me. So maybe it wasn't really POTS related. It's hard to tell sometimes. Like I feel like my POTS, EDS, they sometimes like to intermingle and have a little fun together. And then I can't exactly tell what's causing what. Um, but for the most part, I can tell what's POTS and then what's just like EDS in general. But I do kind of feel a little bit inactive so far today which is fine you know like i like to be active and i try my hardest but sometimes when it gets hot it's a little bit harder plus i've just been letting myself rest for the past for like the past multiple days because i'm going to fire island tomorrow as i mentioned for the week with my family and i'm just you know getting ready to expend some energy there there's no cars on the island so it's completely walking and biking um so it's like i'm gonna need to be walking around so i i know that I need to, to chill a little bit, but I do think I'm gonna do the bike. I was, was not sure if I was gonna do it, but I'm, I'm telling myself I'm doing it. I'm not gonna walk on the treadmill. I'm gonna do 10 minutes on the bike tonight. So I'm gonna go take another propranolol just to prepare, and then maybe in 30 minutes I'll go do that. As I frequently do, I completely forgot to end the video. <laughs> At the end of the night, I kind of just crashed because sometimes exercise really takes something out of me, like a lot out of me, and other times I feel okay. Um, I know it's dysautonomia related. I know that sometimes I get really nauseous and that's kind of how I was feeling. So I actually took my blood pressure, but it was totally normal. It's just, you never totally know. Sometimes it's hard to confuse blood pressure with 
heart rate and anything else relating to dysautonomia. It's weird because sometimes those values look fine, but I still feel like crap. I know back maybe last summer, my POTS was bothering me more than it is this summer, thank goodness. And one thing I did was I wore my Fitbit a lot because I didn't realize this, but sometimes when I was working out, my heart rate would get so high and then I really would not feel good. Um, so I just figured out I could just wear this and keep my heart rate below 160 and then I don't feel nearly as bad. So that's kind of the, the thing that I learned, just a good tip for anybody out there. Maybe you could find out your heart rate that you shouldn't go above without feeling sick. Um, but even still, it does not always work. Sometimes you just don't feel good. So that was kind of me the other night, so I didn't get to end it. I frequently get asked, what's the difference between POTS and dysautonomia? So as I kind of explained in the beginning, POTS is a type of dysautonomia. I technically have more than one type. Um, I was initially diagnosed with um, POTS orthostatic intolerance and orthostatic hypotension. I'm pretty sure I don't have orthostatic hypotension anymore. Um, like if I were to stand up, I don't think my blood pressure really changes as much as it used to, if even much at all. It used to like tank. <laughs> um, so it doesn't do that anymore. Thank goodness. I don't know why, but I'm happy about it. And I guess the thing that I can say is that while I have POTS and POTS is a type of dysautonomia, I have symptoms of dysautonomia that don't fit into the category of POTS. So some people will just be, will just have POTS and that will be like their literal only thing within dysautonomia. They could have it so much worse than me, but it could still just be POTS. Whereas for me, yes, Kwame, <laughs> my cat, whereas for me, it's a bit more... Uh, it takes little samples from other types of dysautonomia too. Um, if that makes sense, but I don't have any of them as bad as I do POTS. POTS is really my main diagnosis. Um, but like, for example, like I just have extra issues with circulation. I have Raynaud's. Um, I oftentimes have like weird limb discoloration and like differences between the limbs, if that makes sense. Like one leg will be a different color than the other. Um, I struggle a lot to maintain my body temperature, which I think is also a POTS thing, but I think it's also more of like a generalized dysautonomia thing. But yeah, I hope that that gives like a little bit of clarity for anybody watching this. And I also hope that anybody who has POTS on here felt like, you know, somebody else understands what it's like to just be thinking about it a lot and have to, you know, pr like pre-medicate, if that makes sense, before doing things or just what it's like to to feel not so great at a lot of different points throughout the day, even if I can still get the things that I wanna do done or most of them, it's still not necessarily that easy. So yeah, anyway, um, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you to Comrade for sponsoring this video and I will see you guys on the next video. Bye.